recent study conducted by the U.S. Department of Transportation showed that in 2016, 94% of accidents on roadways were caused by drivers. This costs lives and takes a massive economic toll. The driverless car solution chosen by our group is intended to minimize dangerous crashes caused by human error. Our primary goal is to quickly reach and maintain an appropriate speed without surpassing the maximum posted speed of the road. In order to do this, overshoot needs to be less than 5% in order to prevent velocities in excess of the posted speed limit. Rise time was selected to be less than 10 seconds because this value is both plausible and effective in the context of this system. To accurately maintain the desired speed, steady state error should be eliminated. However, since no steady state error is not likely, the goal was to merely minimize it as much as possible. For our car, um, we modeled it as a mass with a damper, as you can see right here. Um, the engine has a force that'll pull on both the mass and the damper. Um, the mass just represents the mass of the car and the Damping coefficient B just represents um, damping due to wind and um, brake friction and that sort of thing. So we can take this model and model it as a circuit, see in this impedance diagram right here. So right now we have our force acting as a current source and it's going through these two resistors. One's equal to one over MS plus B, which represents our mass here, and then one is one over B, which represents our damper right here. So we can take this circuit and try to find V of S. So to find V of S, we just take the equivalent resistance of these two impedance blocks and multiply it by our F of S value, and then do a little math simplification, and we can find our transfer function velocity of S over F of S is equal to one over MS plus B. And that's how we get our plant G of S. Once we have our impedance and we use that to find our transfer function, we want to analyze our open loop for a couple things, including stability and rise time. We know that the system is stable because it only has one pole, and that one pole is in the left-hand plane. Since we already know it's stable, we can move on to rise time. The rise time here is calculated TR equals 2.2 divided by omega n. Um, using this equation and some other mathematics that you can find in our report, um, we calculated the rise time to be 3.3 seconds. Our initial goal was to have rise time under 10 seconds. 3.3 is definitely under 10, so we hit that goal of just our open loop system. So we're definitely gonna hit that for our closed loop system moving forward. All right, so we also found that our sailing time is equal to 4.6 over omega, um, which we found to be 6.9 seconds for our car. And then we also looked at the steady state error. So the formula for steady state error is the limit as S approaches zero of s times the error of s, which turns into the limit of s approaches zero of s times r of s, which is our input over one plus our transfer function g of s. So we put s times one over s, which is our input, since it's going to be a unit step function, and divided by one plus one over m s plus b, the um, m portion cancels to zero, and we're left with one over one plus one over b as our final steady state error for the open loop system. So after we analyzed our open loop system, it's time to close the loop. That's what this feedback line is right here. This is our closed loop block diagram. As you can see, we have our input represented by RS. We have our controller, or what will be our controller once we determine what that is, as CS, a possible disturbance as DS, and our transfer function that we found previously as GS. Our output is Y of S, and then this is our feedback, which is what closes that loop. So we found G of S to be 1 over MS plus B in our initial preliminary calculations of that transfer function. And here we approximated M to be roughly 1,500 and B to be 1,000. The mass was calibrated by doing some research, finding the average mass of a, of a car that would be considered a driverless vehicle, um, not a truck, just a car. Um, and then B was also an average calculation. So once we found all of our G values, we went and we discussed what type of controller that we would want to plug in for C. So the controller that we ended up going with is a PI controller, where P stands for proportional and I stands for integral. Proportional is basically a scaling factor where we can kind of scale up or scale down the values of our control system. And the integral, what that does is for every integral added, it actually reduces our steady state error. 
these two things combined actually had us hit all three of our goals, our rise time, our study state error minimized, and our overshoot of less than 5%. And since we hit all three of those goals with the PI controller, that's our final controller. In order to find the appropriate values for our PI controller, um, we used MATLAB's control system designer to find these values. Um, we started out with a KP of 100 and a KI of 10, and then we played around with the graphs in order to reach our desired cutoff frequency of 0.22 radians per second and a phase margin of 69.1 degrees. Once we got the parameters all in the right frame, of set, all in the right frame, um, we found out that the actual values were the KP of 44.1 and a KI of 232. These are the values we ultimately use to verify um, the functionality of our system. We used to find the KP and KI values for our PI controller. Our system was implemented in Simulink in order to verify the functionality of our system. The R of S values were changed so that the initial value matched the final value. This reflected the overall goal of having the actual speed of the car match the desired input. Once this was ran, it gave us a time response plot from which we could find the rise time. It, using the bi-level measurements function, a rise time of 6.03 seconds was found. This is considerably below our desired rise time of 10 seconds, so no further iterations were necessary. Uh, the big difference between the two values is likely due to the fact that the initial desired rise time of 10 seconds was an arbitrary value um, that was determined to be reasonable within the scope of our system. For our robustness analysis, we found that our gain margin was equal to infinity, which means that we can increase our gain as much as we want and the system will not become unstable. And then we also found our phase margin and our cutoff frequency to be 74.2 72 degrees and 0.22 radians per second. With these values, we can find our maximum time delay, which is equal to 5.89 seconds. This means that anything below that time delay will remain stable. Anything above it will become unstable. So, as you see in these two graphs, the first one on top is a time delay of 5.7 seconds. And it's very unstable to begin with, but it eventually reaches a CAC value. Um, the graph on the bottom has a time delay of 5.9 seconds, which is above our maximum time delay. So as you can see, it eventually becomes unstable after a very long time. If the time delay were any larger, it would have a much quicker response of instability. Without being able to physically build and test the driverless car system, um, there is no way to really completely verify the functionality of this system. However, um, due to our verification using both MATLAB and Simulink, and the similar plots we received across the two platforms, um, we are confident in the functionality of this system and that it will operate as it was intended to.